Boom. All right, this is the tutorial on how to workflow and do a light edit in Adobe um, Lightroom. All right, so we've downloaded the images from yesterday. Your task is to take approximately 300 images. Uh, when you um, upload your images, you should already know how to import an image from our previous project, but just to recap, you push the import button under the libraries tab at the top here, and then you can import your images. So I've already imported these images of Harris from yesterday, and you have a folder here where it has your previous import. You can also locate it under the date. So we should be able to go down in here and find those images of Harris as well. Let's see. Um, no, I'm not seeing them. Hmm. Something tells me the date's wrong on the camera. Right, we will find them. Let's see here. Sixty-five. All right. So here's what we're gonna do is. We're gonna wake up the previous imports here. You'll notice right right above the previous imports, it will have um, this quick collection right here. You see that? This is actually what we're gonna be using to are these two here. So the first thing we gotta do is we got if you have a number in here in the quick collection, we gotta clear that. So we have these pictures of Oscar we want we want to get rid of. So I'm just gonna simply right click, and I want to save quick collection. I'm going to call, call this Oscar, and then make sure that this box is clicked, and then I click Save, and now if I go down here to my bottom, I have my collections, I should have one that has Oscar. So if I want to go back and pull up that specific collection, I can. So you're going to create your a new collection, so a quick collection. So we go to Previous Import, we have our images here, and you have a thumbnail slider right here where you can make the images really big or really small. I'm going to keep them kind of a medium, so I get three per side here. And all I'm looking for here is, does the image look like it's in focus? Do I like the, the exposure of it? And do I like the pose, really? Are they smiling? Does it look good? If I like it, it goes into the quick collection. And then from there, I'm going to narrow it down to the final three. So as I go through here, I don't know, this one's just kind of fun. I'm going to throw that one in there. Um, this one's kind of fun. That's Harris, you know, a little blue steel. I don't know. Uh, the laughing ones are always great. Let's see here. That's a good one of Harris. That's actually not a bad one there. So you can go through and you're just going to simply go through and you see how this little little button is up here this little dot you're gonna click on that and you'll notice that it's adding them to my quick collection here that's actually a good one Very good. All right, so I now have 10 images in my quick collection. I can click on that, and now I'm just looking at these 10. From here, I can narrow it down to my top three. So I can already tell you this one's got a little too much shadow. I'm going to get rid of that one. Um, I really like this one, so I know that one's going to stay in. This one's a little too dark. This one looks like it's a little blurry. That one's out. That one's out. All right. So here I can look at a little more detail here. So this one looks like it might be a little bit blurry. So I'm just going to make it really big. And I'm just going to look at it and just kind of make sure that it's not. Let's 
Okay, so we're gonna go with loving that one. All right, so I'm gonna go with these three images. So I, I narrowed down to my top three, just like that. From there, I can click on the develop module or develop module up here. And this gives me more options on my sliders here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through it and I'm just going to give the, the program and the computer an opportunity to kind of um, just show me what it can do. This is will get me into the ballpark of where I want to be. So I click on auto and it's going to lighten it up for me. And I can go through and look at these. And then I'm going to see at the bottom here, I can, I can click at the right there underneath the image and click select just that one. So that gives me a starting point. So if I zoom in here, I can push the space bar on the keyboard and it's going to zoom in. I can come up here and grab this and kind of zoom in and really look at the fine detail there. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to do some blemish removal and some teeth whitening. And this program allows you to do that really easily. So over here you have some tools. You have your um, crop tool, you have the um, blemish removal tool or spot removal tool, you have red eye reduction. Um, and those are the three that we really want to focus on. We'll get to brushes here in just a minute. But this is the one we want to focus on. And if I leave my cursor over it, yep, spot removal. The keyboard short, shortcut for that is Q. All right, so I'm going to click on that, and then I have this little circle. By using the bracket keys on the keyboard, I can make that circle bigger or smaller. And what it does is you can go in somewhere where you see a blemish, and it will move it around, and you can grab it and move it somewhere else if it like accidentally grabs some eyebrow or something you don't want. But it does its best to kind of just guess on where it's going to pull that information from. All right, and then I can grab this. Okay, so Harris has got pretty good skin, so we're in luck there. Um, we're going to whiten his teeth now, so I'm going to click off of this and go to my brushes. When I click on the brush here and I hit the little drop down here, it gives me all kinds of different options for brushes. Um, you're going to have just kind of a basic set in your, your Lightroom um, brush category. And for this one, there should be one, if we skim all the way to the bottom, that says teeth whitening. I click on that. I'm able to come in here and I can go in and paint. So if I want to see really like good detail on where I'm painting, you have the show select mask overlay option at the bottom here. You can check that on and it brings up that red. So it kind of shows like a red like area. So it shows you exactly where you're painting. And see how I just kind of overpainted that tooth a little bit? I'm going to show you how to, how to undo that. It's the same thing as in Photoshop where you hold down the option key to unpaint something. But we're just going to go in here and grab his teeth. And do it. Not that he needs it, but this is just a demonstration. Okay, so I overpainted right here, so I'm just going to hold down the option key. You'll notice that it goes from a plus sign to a minus sign. And I can go in there and unpaint that area. Looks like I want to get a little more in there. I don't, I don't know if he's in there, Cameron. He is. Okay. All right, so now we've selected his teeth. Um, I'm going to uncheck the show selected mask overlay. And you can see they already look a little bit whiter, but you can actually go in here and control the amount of whitening. So you can get, actually go crazy, make them super white, but um, don't overdo this, or you can make them look darker if you wanted to. Um, it's really kind of a preference thing, but you don't want to overdo it. All right, so from there, I'm going to click off my brush. And I have I want to add like a vignette here. So I have some vignetting options over here. So I'm gonna go over here and look through my my um, Lightroom effect presets. You should have these. And we're just gonna add a light vignette on it. So it's gonna make it a little darker around my edges. And then just the overall appearance of the image looks a little dark to me. And I'm just gonna kick that exposure up a little bit. And these next couple steps are something I do to almost every single image that I edit in Lightroom. I go all the way down to the bottom here and I enable the profile cor um, correction. What this does, it takes the information from the lens and it um, has kind of a map that says this is how it should look according to whichever lens that you shot with. 
So it was shot with a cannon and we used a 24 to 70 at 2.8. It knows that information and it just goes in and kind of flattens it out a little bit. All right, from there we want to go to, um, let's see here. Where's the dehazing? All right, so if we go under the effects category, I always add just a little bit of dehazing to it. And I never really go above 20. So 20 on the dehazing. And then I always uh, kick up my highlights just a little bit and lower my darks. It just adds a little tonal curve to it. You'll notice up here, this is your, uh, your tonal tonal curve um, adjustments. All right, so from there, that looks pretty good. Um, now, it's kind of a weird like crop, so I'm just going to crop it a little bit um, to make it look a little more centered. So I'm going to put his eyeball right there on the crosshair, applying rule of thirds to it. All right, so this is the edited one. And then for the, if I want to see the before, all I have to do on your keyboard, you have the forward slash, which is right under the, the delete button. If I push that, it should give me the before preview. You see that? Before, after. Before, after. Before, after. Wow. Okay, so we're going to get to how to export the, the befores in just a moment, okay? So I'm going to go through, I'm going to edit this one really fast, and then I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Um, so actually, let's do this one. Okay, so this one looks a little bit too bright to me. So I'm actually going to come down here to my tonal curves and I'm going to um, kick up the darks a little bit or bring down the darks a little bit. Kick up the highlights, still a little overexposed. So let's we'll drop that down just a little bit. Good. And then we'll do the blemish removal. So again, oh, got to zoom in first, space bar. And come over here and grab this. And just a little zap. Okay, so we've kind of discussed this a little bit, so we'll just go over it really fast. What if you do if somebody has like a, a wart or a mole on their face? Um, do you remove it or do you leave it? What do you guys think? Why do you leave it? Yeah, it's just it's a part of the person. Now you, yeah, you want to leave it because it's a part of that person. If it's something temporary like a pimple, remove it. If it's something that's permanently there, leave it. Now you can go in and there's some things you can do to um, in Photoshop to reduce the the appearance of it so it's not so predominant. But um, yeah, you would te technically want to leave it. Yes. What if they ask you to remove it? If they ask you to remove it, you remove it. Okay. And that's a, that's one of those awkward questions where you're like. Um, so for editing, is there anything you'd like me to do? <laughs> um, and sometimes they will tell you. All right, so blemish removal, we'll do a quick teeth whitening, and then we'll move on. All right, so, oh, he doesn't have any, no teeth showing. We're good. I like it. All right. So I'm going to add just, I'm going to add a little bit of a, let's see here. I'm going to add just a little preset here. What? Well, Very licious is the preset. All right, so now I have these two that are edited. You're going to do all three. But how do you get these? because you have to turn in the edited and the unedited versions, right? 
it's really simple. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just throw something on this one just so we have a, a nice compare and contrast. Oh, not that one. There we go. Something really predominant. Light that up a little bit. Okay, so I have my three edits here. Um, I'm going to hit Command A on the keyboard. It's going to select all the images. I'm then going to right click and go to Create Virtual Copies. It's going to make exact copies of these with the edits and everything. There they are. So here's my edits. And see these little dog ears? That indicates that it's a virtual copy. On these virtual copies, I'm going to go right over here and there's a reset button. You see that? Click on reset. And now I have a set of edited images and a set of unedited images. So there's the before. I can actually can I move well, let me move it. Let's see. Yes. All right, so here versus here. It's not a huge difference, but you can see, get the idea. And then to export these out again, Command A, Oop. right click, export. All right, you're gonna give it a place to go, preferably your thumb drive, but if you don't have your thumb drive, put it on the desktop, put it into a subfolder. So we're gonna call this Harris. Oop. Can't type. You can give it a custom name if you want. So I'm going to call these hairs. I'm going to equality, give me 100%. And then for your watermark, I'm going to add, add go ahead and add your watermark to that. So you should still have your watermark in there from that last product that we did and you click on export. The idea, here, the idea here, guys and girls, is that you get into this program, you start playing with the tools, you really get used to it, kind of get just a general idea of some of the different things that you can do with it. So right now it's exporting it out from a raw image into a JPEG image, which we can now easily put on to social media, share with our clients, do whatever we need to do. Okay? All right. Um, select an image. So let's select this one here and you hit Command E on the keyboard and it will export it from Lightroom into Photoshop. Th when this pops up, yes, you want to render using Lightroom and it will move the image over to Photoshop where you can go through and do other things like that wart reduction and things like that. All right, that's it. Any questions? Yes? Uh, this is a question, but can you use Lightroom to Turn a JPEG into a raw No, it doesn't go backwards. But you can edit JPEGs in it too. Do we necessarily have to add a preset? Nope, you don't have to. Okay. It's there if you want it. Okay. Alrighty, I'm gonna turn this off now. Last chance for questions? Nope. Oh, Alright. And there it is in Photoshop.